Foxcox transformation for multiple linear regression models and how to apply it in R. We will discuss how to use Boxcox and why it is needed to use. Among certain aspects we will cover, we are going to learn how to fit a multiple linear regression model, how to create graph to test model assumptions, as well as how to apply the Boxcox function. And you will learn how to read and understand linear models output. Let's go next to work with R now. As mentioned before, we're going to learn how to apply Boxcox for different situations. First, you have to fit a linear model. In this case, we're going to talk about two important libraries for speeding up our process. In this case, it's Tidyverse for data manipulation as well as Caret for building better machine learning models. You can see, work on some data, in this case, and you can see what we have here around, and you can check. You can see how many columns we have. We have years, salary. So the idea here is to run a linear model trying to predict the salary for a certain individual given the years working. Then here we're going to plot our data set with certain conditions. You can see any tag, the, col the color, certain aspects for the lines, and with the title. You can see here. This is the idea. Why to use box code transformation? Well, we want our new model to use a new variable. Which variable? Well, our transform variable. Which variable gonna transform? Well, maybe our dependent variable is the one that is causing our problems. And then we're gonna try to change it to a normal distribution. Why? Because that's gonna improve our homocedasticity and the normality of our residuals. Let's check here the original data. Check here. This doesn't look normal at all because they should, it should be something like this, bell shape. It's not looking that, like that. Then, when I use the library mass, and check something here. We have this transformation. Y is gonna be our salary in this case. Then, we want to find the best lambda the best lambda that allows us to transform our variable salary into a normal distribution. Okay, if lambda is equal to zero, of course we cannot calculate the denominator there. You can see it, and then we're going to use the natural logarithm. Important. Well, for that we're just going to call the function boxcock, and we pass our linear model, previous linear model. And we want to see the plot, plot true. And we have from minus two to two, that's the default. Then let's create it. And there you go. This is the output. Hmm. The higher the better. So you can see here which value should we should use for a lambda. See, mm, it's near zero. 0. 0.001 or something like that, but near zero. We can calculated or you can find what is that that value just passing or saving that information directly into a variable like we call it b and then you extract which one is the, the highest value as you can see we're going to use 0 0.1 that is telling us that that should be the best lambda to use in y transformation and there are some other information when you use box box now that means that we're going to apply this. We should use 0 or 0 0.01. Well, in this case, we're going to use 0. We're going to use directly, because it's so close, we're going to use logarithm. Then, you can see, instead of using some transformation like this, we're going to use directly log. In R, we call log for logarithm, and we calculate a new linear model. We're going to call it initex fit always with the training data set and we create this new model there you go the coefficients there you go check that something has changed why because if the years are going to go now to a logarithm of salary those years have to be multiplied with a smaller number remember that in the past it was something around 9000 but now it's just 0 0.08 of course 
this has to be like this. That's in the intercept. Now let's check our data, the original data, with the model. But check something here that is important in UC. Plug. In the plot, I put log, not the original data directly, because I need to use transform it with the transform it observations in my linear model. Okay? You go here. It's a little better, right? No problem of any tail here. Wow. Terrific. You can see that's why it was so necessary. Of course, for you, I let you to use the 0 0.1. The transformation uses 0 0.1. And if compare this model, my model using logarithm with yours using 0 0.1, and you can let some comments about it. Okay. Something important. The original data, remember, the original data is not logarithm. How can I go back, transform it back? Then here you can see this is my original data. You can see here. I'm gonna show you. You see what the, the thing is. If I have to use logarithm, that means that go back. I have to use an exponential. Exponential. Remember that logarithm of y of the salary is equal to my my form my formula as I when I write it here as you can see I'm gonna print summary again summary of Unitec fit log you see here the values here and you can use the coef as I already did. What well, what well, if I want to find salary yeah it's, I'm not gonna find salary directly I'm gonna find salary because that's our model, how it was built. It was going to be 10.46 plus 0 0.08 times years. That means given certain years, I can find what is the salary, but the log of the salary. And because I want to find salary in the original Unix, I have to say salary is going to be the exponential of all here, 10 point 46 and so on. Okay? And that's what is written right here. Right here. Now, instead of using upline, I'm going to use curve because that way it's going to curve. Show my curve that I have here. Check that coefficient is that one is the intercept. This one is the coefficient for my variable years. Okay? And who is x? Well, x is years, but I'm telling it's from 0 to 30 around. So you can see here, it's going from 0 to around 30. But, okay? And then let's plot it together. And there you go. Can you see? That means that do we have a linear model, a simple re linear regression model? Actually, yes. Because we call this linear due to the coefficients, due to the variables. Even if the variables have some exponential there, but remember that I can separate this. I can find that's exponential of this multiplied with this. At the end, I'm going to have some coefficient multiplied with a the variable. Then, yes, it's still a linear model. Okay? This is from some property of exponential, of course. But I mentioned it. And check then that my construction is not a linear, a straight line, but a curved line at the end. Now let's check if this allows us to meet our assumptions. Now let's plot. And the one that was causing problems was equal of variance. And here you go. Check that there's there's no pattern at all. Now all our dots are scattered all around. No pattern, no visual pattern at all. That's good. Normally it has changed. Yeah, it looks the same, but that's not our problem. That's that we can say the less of our problems. And scale location, which looks still okay. No noticeable outliers at all. There you go. Now we can see here what is the this one is for fitted values versus residuals. So you can see, and we can see it even better than before. 
there you go you can see no pattern at all it's just scattered all around that's good and normality on the way is using cuban norm so, well there you go now let's cut cal calculate the root mean square error that's the difference of the fitted values with the real values and we calculate what is the mean of those errors and check that this is the first model i built and this is the second one let's calculate this check here how it dropped but there's it's some trick here that here we have logarithm okay if we really want to really compare the huge difference between 20,000 and 0.16 we have to go to the original scale okay there, that's gonna be better now let's see here check that I put exponential again <laughs> okay and here you go here we have a 20,000 in here now we can compare the real values in salary for training and the fitted values can you check it's more than 4,000 units it dropped more than 4,000 units and that's great because remember we want to reduce those errors mean square error or roots mean square error here you have and remember what happened with the r square the coefficient of determination is still good more than 88 percent still good now let's make some predictions to calculate how it how it is compared our training with our testing for our new model let check let's check here that i change it to exponential because the results here are a logarithm logarithm of salary okay that's very important it's very important now we can compare check this i put in exponential of the fitted values for the training and here directly for our test because i just converted there you go now you can see the test drop a little bit compared to r square that's okay and you can notice here that 87 is due that in we had logarithm and now here are the original data as so you can see for the exponential compared with the training values you can see and the errors are still um, we we'll say greater for the test than for the train but it's good the model has improved a little bit noticeable yes and we met the assumptions okay that's how you apply box cox and logarithm it is important how to use box cox and how to use logarithm transformation in R for regression models see you next episode talking about more regression models